Chapter 9 Lulu closed and opened, then closed, then opened her eyes again and decided she wasn't dreaming after all. She quickly climbed out of her sleeping bag and announced to the Brontosaurus, It's my birthday today, and just in time I've found you. No, I've found you, the Brontosaurus told Lulu, and I'd like to wish you a very happy birthday. Oh, it will be very happy, Lulu said to the Brontosaurus, because you, she patted his ankle, because his ankle was as high as she could reach, you are the pet I am getting for my birthday. The Brontosaurus bent down his neck so his face was close to Lulu's. He looked at her back to front and head to toes, sniffing at her carefully with his Brontosaurus nose and making a rumbling noise. Nobody knows how dinosaurs sound, but in this story they rumble, and slowly nodding, nodding his pin-headed head. A pet, he said to Lulu after he's nodded for a while, is a very good thing. A very, very good thing, Lulu replied. She opened her suitcase and went digging around inside and pulled out a white leather collar, which she fastened around the brontosaurus's neck. Now, I'll just touch this leash. She dug some more and found a long, long leash in her suitcase and take you home with me. Lulu attached the leash to the collar, feeling so pleased with herself that she sang a whole new Brontosaurus song. I got it, I got it, I got what I wanted to get, a Bronto, 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 Brontosaurus for a pet. I got it, I got it, I got what I wanted to get, a Bronto, 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 Brontosaurus for a pet. She would have kept feeling pleased with herself, except now the Brontosaurus was shaking his head, and now in his rumbling voice he was saying, No. He was saying no and shaking his head till the collar and leash flew off. No, he said, I don't wish to be your pet. Lulu, remember, hated hearing no. She really, really hated hearing no. So she screeched till all the birds fled from the trees. <coughs> and then she threw herself down on the forest floor, and then she kicked her heels and waved her arms. The brontosaurus waited patiently without saying one more word until she had stopped with the screeching and kicking and waving. Finished now? He quite politely asked. Maybe I am, Lulu said, and maybe I'm not. It all depends. And here she shook a finger right in the Brontosaurus' face. This girl was a pain, but she wasn't a scaredy cat. It all depends on whether you stop saying no and start saying yes to being my pet. The Brontosaurus shook his head no some more. Lulu thought about screeching and so forth some more. But instead she said in a very snippy voice, Now listen here. You were the one who said to me just a minute ago that, and I quote, a pet is a very good thing. That's what I said, the brontosaurus admitted. So what, Lulu asked, is your problem, Mr. B? No problem, he answered. Just a misunderstanding, because when I said that a pet is a very good thing, I didn't mean I wanted to be your pet. I meant that you'd be a very good pet for me. Chapter 10 Lulu's eyes were two round O's of amazement. She tried to speak, but at first no words came out. Then finally she was able to say in a squeaky, amazed kind of voice, I don't think I heard what I think I just heard, Mr. B. You did indeed, the brontosaurus replied. Well, if I did, Lulu's voice was back to being its old boasty self again. Well, if I did, I've got some news for you. A person has a pet. An animal is a pet. A person can't be an animal's pet ever. And I have some news for you, 
The brontosaurus said to Lulu, except that he spoke more politely than Lulu had done. You're about to be the first person ever to be an animal's pet. Congratulations, and once again, happy birthday. He reached out a hand, or whatever you want to call it, and gently scooped Lulu off the forest floor. He then plunked her gently down his back, met his neck. Hold on tight, little pet. He said to Lulu, I'll pull off some leaves from the tops of the trees for your breakfast, and then I'm taking you home to live with me. No! yelled Lulu. No, no, no! A billion zillion times no! Yes, yes, yes! The brontosaurus replied, I'll feed you and pet you and play with you and treat you very nicely. And all I'll expect from you is to sit and roll over and fetch a ball and do cute tricks. What did he think she was, some kind of dog girl? I really don't know. I can't read a dinosaur's mind. Lulu thought about screeching and throwing herself on the forest floor, except that the forest floor was a long way down. She thought about squeezing the dinosaur dead, except that she needed both hands to hang on to his neck. She thought about swinging and swinging her suitcase and bonking him on the head, except that she'd left her suitcase under a tree. And she couldn't stomp on his foot because his feet were far too far from his back where he'd plunk her. Then Lulu started to think that the only thing farther from where the brontosaurus had plunk her was her home. Her home where her mom and dad were waiting. Her very own home where no one, not even when she was being a pain, which was most of the time, had ever, ever expected her to sit and roll over and fetch and do cute tricks. I want to go home to my house. Lulu told the brontosaurus, then added in a lot less bossier voice, Please let me go back to my house, Mr. B. This was maybe the very first time in Lulu's entire life that she, without being told, had used the P word. And yet the brontosaurus shook his head no. Once you get used to it, he kindly told Lulu, I truly believe that you like being a pet. Lulu imagined being a pet in the house of this brontosaurus and never seeing her mom or her dad again. She imagined eating leaves and doing cute tricks, and she said to herself that if only she could turn today into yesterday, she wouldn't go looking for dinosaurs in the forest and she wouldn't say foo on you to her mom and her dad. She was feeling especially sorry that she had ever said foo on you to her mom and her dad.